You are watching SOHH.com. Hey everyone, it's Serena here with So.com, and I'm here with Houston's own, the people's champ, the poet, poet Mr. Paul Wall, y'all. What it do? Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. How's your day going so far? It's going great. Great day. Great day That's today. Good. This is going to be a good interview. I like the energy, so let's get into it. So you recently dropped your new project, The Great Wall. And low key, people may not realize that you've been dropping music consistently, but it's something about this project, it seems like you're pushing it more mainstream, you know? And you have a lot of great features on it. Just to name a few, you got That Mexican OT, Little Kiki, Bun B, and I gave it a listen. I actually like it a lot. Swinging Glass is definitely one of my favorite songs, but I want you to tell us a little bit about this project and what inspired you. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to put some good positive vibes out there, you know, with the with everything from the production, you know, to the lyrics, of course, calling it the great wall is, you know, I wanted to be the best representation of me, you know, what I'm saying on that. So it was something I worked on for a long time. You know, I, I definitely put a lot of hard work into it. Uh, you know, it's something I'm very proud of. Of course, shout out to my boy DJ Fresh. You know, he did a lot of the production on there. Also, you know, solo, Big Swift. Uh, my boy Bruce Bang, Platinum Hands, Five Nine, all the producers on there. It was a it was a lot of fun working on the, the music, and of course, when you're thinking about that, when you're thinking about okay, I want to be the best representation of me on each song. Sometimes when you're making music, you know, what I'm saying you can get kind of uh, creatively, you kind of just throw stuff at the wall sometimes. But when you focus and you're hyper focused on it being something specific, it's easy to you know when you're in there to say, nah, this ain't it. Nah, that ain't it. Nah, this ain't it. Let's keep going. We stay focused on on what we're trying to do with this. And you're absolutely right. I've been putting out a lot of independent music just kind of on my own over the years. Uh, I, I've really been trying to focus mostly more on the music than on the marketing and promotion mm -hmm. side of it. When I first came onto the scene, even from the very beginning, I came in 14 years old, passing out flyers, putting posters up, bringing records to DJ. So I was doing marketing and promotions from the absolute very beginning, even before I came into the Switch House. That's what got me in the door of the Switch House was the fact that I did marketing and promotion. I did marketing and promotion for the Switch House before I even rapped for the Switch House. So that's something that was always like the number one, you know, uh, uh, number one on the agenda when we're thinking about what went into putting out the music was the promotion and the marketing. Um, but as I, I ascended in the mainstream, you know, I feel like I kind of maybe I didn't lose track of who I was, but I, I, I think I allowed the music that came out to be less representative of who I was and more kind of just whatever. So I started focusing more on the type of music that I want to put out. What do I want to listen to? What do I want to be represented for with my music when it when it's you know when we look back thirty years from now and I put an album out? How, how does it get represented? So that's when I started focusing more on the quality of the music, the type of music. And uh, now that I, you know I've been doing that for the past I don't know ten or so albums, I said okay, let me just let me shift a little bit, pivot more on the marketing promotion, and that's why this one I've been a little going in a little bit more on that. Yeah, I could definitely tell you put your heart in this one because I'm just like, if it, it was that feel good music, and I was like, damn, we missed this. Like, because the stuff that's out now is just not, it don't hit like it needs to, you know, like it used to, you know. <laughs> You know, it's a, as an established artist who's, you know, in the in, in my career doing this, sometimes you find yourself following the trends of what's mm -hmm. successful or what works. So throughout the years, there's always been certain sexualized things that will get pushed or accepted more because you can cross over more to different audiences. So they seem to work more because they're a little more successful. You know, right now what's very successful is, you know, any of the music that has a lot of hard hitting drums, uh, you know, anything that's super hyper sexualized and anything that's super hyper violence based is really getting pushed right now. But there's all type of music being created and made. But me as an artist, I got to try to say, like I said, I got to try to stay focused on what type of music do I want to put out? What do I want to listen to? Not necessarily what is, you know, the trends of the day. So th there's nothing wrong with, the, in my mind, the, the sexualization or the violence, or whatever it is. There's a place for that. Now, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. What do I like? I like the beats. I like the bars. The beats I like are more jazz based or blues based where you hear a lot of bass guitar in them or you hear the hard hitting bass drums. 
but not, you know, like they not not the war drum style where I want to go, you know what I'm saying? Just tear somebody head off more something where you can just vibe and relax to. But that's more of my cup of tea, my style. The, the artists that I listen to, that I like to listen to, like Scarface or UGK or Lil Kiki or Rich the Factor, that's the type of music that, that, that they make. That's what I like to listen to. But there's nothing wrong with any of the other, you know, because to each his own. That's what I like to listen to, just like you might like to listen to something else. You know, I, I don't. I'm not here to criticize nobody. Just only point out that you know that just right now, that's that is what seems to be more selling is you know the more hyper violence. Now, is it because there's record labels saying, okay, this is what we're gonna put the funding behind? Because at the end of the day, you put a bag behind any type of song, and you're gonna see some results. You know what I'm saying? No matter if the music is trash, no matter what the quality of the music or, or the topics of the music are, you put a good bag behind it, you're gonna see some results. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, as an artist, I want to put out what I want to be represented and known for. So that's what I that's what I try to do is put out, man. What do I want to jam? What do I want to listen to? Okay, well, let me. That's the kind of music I'm gonna make. I'm not gonna complain and say, oh, ain't nobody making this kind of music." Well, I'm an artist. Why? Why would I complain? If I'm a chef, why? Would, and I want to eat some food. I'm gonna cook the kind of food I want to eat. You know, I'm not gonna complain to the other. I'm a, I'm a chef. I don't care what the other restaurants is cooking. If I'm hungry, I'm gonna cook what I want to eat. You know, and that's just mm -hmm. as an artist is how it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the kind of music that I want to listen to or that. People who have been fans of me for a long time say that they've been missing or they've been wanting or that they say, hey, man, keep making this kind of music because this is what they want. This is and it's not necessarily what gets pushed by the uh, by the masses, you know, so shout mm -hmm. out to the underground. For sure. And thank you for staying authentically yourself in it in all of this whole transition, and everything, too. It's, so that's I mean, I mean, now for sure, I ain't chipping. If they won't put me on a song, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll step out. But, you you know, sometimes you can lose who you are chasing the bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I will, you know, if they want to give me a million dollars, go do a song with somebody that's way out of, you know, I might do it. But there are some, there, there are some, you know, uh, we do have, we have a, a venting, pro, a, a vetting process where we got to vet. You know, we gotta make sure they ain't got some certain racist things going on in their history. Yeah, you gotta sure. be cautious sometimes. Yeah, you feel me? Well, just even then, you don't want to be. I don't. You don't want to be associated with certain people. I don't want my mm -hmm. who I am to be. You know what I'm saying? With certain certain things, but you know, definitely, man. It's uh, that's you know. I look at the people who are my heroes, my rap heroes. They've always been authentic to who they are. So that's the same okay. path I'm gonna follow. For sure. Okay. So next question. You just dropped Covered in Ice with that Mexican OT, and in a few months back, you collabed with him on his song Johnny Dang, which for many people they may not know, is referencing Johnny Dang, who's a famous jeweler down there in Houston, Texas. So how did that collab happen? And I love that song, by the way, too. Man, that Mexican OT has been grinding for a long time, putting in work on a you know regional scale or independent scale. So a lot of people don't know, you know, what's been bubbling under the scenes, but he's got a uh, man, he's got so much talent. That song, he actually made that song a while back. He just never released it. And oh, wow. you know, when they ended up putting me on the song, of course, I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to get on that song. You know, <laughs> uh, he just so happens to be managed by one of my homeboys, Beat On, who's a, a legendary producer from Houston, G Luck and Beat On, a, a producer duo. You know, he's actually got a lot of production on my next album. He's done a lot of production for me over the years. Uh, um, but he's that's who manages them. And one time we were talking and he just uh, we actually brought it up to him. I was like, hey. You know, you think this is before I had met that Mexican OT. And I was like, hey, you, you think he would be down to do a song with me? Man, how much would he charge me for a verse? You know, uh, you know, because this is a, you know, when you're an up and coming artist, this is a thing where, you know, of course you got to pay for verses, but there comes a point where maybe you don't, maybe you don't charge a certain artist for a verse. So somebody like that Mexican OT, maybe, maybe he was scared to ask me for a verse because he thought I was going to charge him. At the yeah. same token, when you're an up and coming artist and you getting your bag and you selling out shows, these are all things that that Mexican OT was doing before the Johnny Dang song came out. Before the Johnny Dang song came out, he was doing his own tours, got his own merch, got sold out shows, got pop ups where the line is around the corner. I'm talking about going from city to city. I'm talking about hottest fish grease. So yeah. he's doing all of these things before we do the Johnny Dang song. Mm -hmm. So for me, to ask him to do a song, I almost missed my window of opportunity. When you are an established artist, you kind of got a window of opportunity. You know, with a lot of these up and coming artists, any, any of these artists to come out of Houston, whether it's Megan Thee Stallion, Travis Scott, 
Lizzo, Maxo Cream, Toby Nguigwe, all of these artists, or that Mexican OT, any of them. You know, mm -hmm. there might have been some established artists. You know, now maybe maybe their window of opportunity was was when those artists were in high school. Maybe that was a, maybe that's your only window of opportunity. But you do have a window of opportunity to do songs with these people, and you put them out. The problem is when you're an established artist, you usually don't try to do songs with just unknown unknown artists because you're like, man, nah, you know, you, you're trying to. A lot of the established artists who are you know career artists, a lot of them just trying to maintain their relevancy. So you know, it, they they don't really look at it sometimes as doing songs with young artists, or they might only limit a little of what they're doing. And you never know who's gonna blow. You know, I, I don't know who many too many people who could have saw Megan Thee Stallion or Travis Scott or Lizzo, Toby, any of these people I'm naming saw them in high school and said, OK, they're going to be the world's biggest superstar. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a huge prediction because the even the people most people predict like that fizzle out and they don't become that big. You know, there are a lot of really talented people. Sometimes your talent can get in the way of your success because you feel your, your effort and work don't match your talent. And some people with less talent will work harder to overcompensate for their lack of talent. And that's how they get over the top. You know, so mm -hmm. when you have a hell of a combination of the talent and the, the work, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey look out because they coming. But, you know, these artists, you know what I'm saying? When you, you see these artists who are, are huge, major artists, there were times when, you know, they you might have met them and it could have been a they, that could have been a perfect time to do a song. But you miss your window of opportunity. Now these artists are larger than life. Well, yeah. they ain't trying to do no song with you because they looking at you like, man, I tried to do a song with you when you wanted to charge me. You act like you ain't know me. You, you know, you yeah. doodle on me. You know, you shitted on me. on You know, I, you know now I ain't going to do no song with you. You just trying to ride my coattail, which they not wrong at all in feeling that way. Mm -hmm. It don't always that's not always how it happens. You know, me, I'm I'm a little thoughtful when it comes to putting out music. I don't I don't want to put somebody on it just so I can have them on there and mark them off the list. Yep, I got him on the album, got him on nah, I want it to be something, you know, almost magical when we make some some type of music. I want it to mean something when you put not just a checklist of I got them on the album. You feel me? Yeah. But some some artists will do that. Well, they'll just you know count up as many artists as they can just so they can say, Yep, I did the album. And then they then they'll hold their nuts on them and say, yeah, I'm the reason why you popping. I'm the reason why you popping. Just because they were they came out before you did, they make you feel like they they the reason why you exist or have a fan base when that's not it at all. So for me to even do a song with Mexican OT, there would have been nothing wrong with him saying, Yeah, I do a song with you, it's gonna be 20 bands. Nothing wrong with him saying that. So yeah. that, I mean, that's how I go. I missed my shot. I should have did a song with him a year and a half ago. You know what I'm saying? Instead of waiting, you know what I'm saying? So me asking beat on a beat on how much you think Mexican OT will charge me to do a song, you know, and him saying, Man, we was about to ask you, we thought you was gonna charge us. They thinking this ain't because that's just how it goes when you on the grind in the in the rap game. Nobody wrong, I, I wouldn't be wrong for charging him the same way he wouldn't be wrong for charging me. But thankfully, we both on the same page of we trying to represent for you know good hip hop. We, we trying to represent for Texas. We trying to put music together. We trying to combine the fan bases. Me of a, a little older fan, more aged fan base. Him of a little fresher fan base. You know what I'm saying? We trying to bring all of that together and and, and pass the torch around, keep it lit. Because I I didn't I didn't like the torch. I might have held it for a little bit, but I definitely mm -hmm. passed. You know, we playing around robbing with that torch. Now one of us lit it. You feel me? Maybe Lil Kiki might, you know, Scarface, they might be the ones that Bun B, they lit the torch, but we ain't K Reno. We ain't, I ain't like the torch. I'm just carrying it, passing it around. So any of that for me to still be in that circle of the round robin, the passing the torch around, you know, is it, something you uphold. You know, these are, you know, different set of, of rap morals you adhere to when you in that in that circle of you know the generations that come after you and the ones that came before you how you represent for them so for us to get in there and do that song johnny dang man i don't think either one of us thought it was gonna go gold and it's, it's it went crazy like once it hit it was everywhere and i was like oh shit like you know actually what actually, johnny dang actually was like the third song we did together really? first we did another song together we went in the studio mm -hmm. did a song and then it was like, okay, I got a song for my album I want you to get on to. And then, you know, for me, The Great Wall, the one he did. And then, you know, right in the mix of that was like, hey, you know, we got this other song, Johnny Dang. We think, you know, you you might sound good on You be down to get on. Of course, I'm going to get on every song you send me, of course. Or, or you tell me pull up to the studio, I'm pulling up every time. So, you know, when we did the song, it, that's when it was like, okay, 
It really took out, man. Say, man. Hey, shout out to that Mexican up too. Shout out to Johnny Shipes. Johnny Shipes really put a, a lot, a lot into it too. He really, he's the one who really kind of was like, nah, man, you need to get on Johnny Dang. Johnny Dang, you need to that this the one. And of course, so you know, it's hey, man, we got another plaque on the wall. What it do? And that's all that matters. So on the topic of Johnny Dang, so when fans think of grills in Texas. The first people to come to mind are you and him, of course. So how does it feel that new, you and him kind of like, well, pretty much popularized grills for this generation? And then like, how did y'all relationship go from there? It feels great, man. Me, I started off as a customer for grills. Even selling grills, the only reason why I sold grills was to hook my friends up. It wasn't ever to make money or, you know, have a, a you know, saying just, you know, grow an empire or sell world, grills worldwide to everybody or, or birth the next generation of jewelers to sell grills, which is all something that is amazing to see. The same way Johnny Dang gave me my start, you know, to really sell grills like that is the same way he gives other jewelers their start every single day he has you know almost a thousand hosts and maybe not quite that many but he has a lot of wholesale accounts worldwide of jewelers mm -hmm. that you know are in their various city where they're selling grills or, or jewelry of any type and it, it comes essentially from johnny that same opportunity he gave me gave gives the other people so it, it's amazing you know our big salute to my boy johnny dang for you know for, for giving me that opportunity one of course like i said to help build an empire off of this but also just to you know i think back to all the doors it opened for me and my music you know the mm -hmm. The grills was never a, a job that I wanted or a career goal. It was just something I enjoyed. It'd be like, you know, I love Cadillacs. So if I can get a discount on Cadillacs, I'm going to go work at the dealership. Well, hey, I talked to my boy Storm, who's the GM at, at, at Central Houston Cadillac, all the time about the AC man. If I come over, what's the minimum I got to work? Same way I talked to, uh, you know, the, the Astros about say, what job, what's the minimum amount of hours I got to work to be an employee to get a ring when we win the World Series. You know what I'm saying? What job, what's the what's the job? Are any of those jobs open? Well, that's the job I want to apply for. So, you know what I'm saying? So I could get these. So that, 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 that's why I started selling grills in the whole first place. So, so mm -hmm. to me, continue to be a customer of grills or, you know, it's, it's like, of course, I'm going to keep selling them as long as I'm buying them. I'm going to keep selling them as long as my, my partners want them or, you know, but like I say, with the doors that are open for me in music, you know what I'm saying? There might have been artists that Maybe, you know, like I said, when you are an established artist, sometimes you don't give other artists a, a, a really a chance. But if they're going to hook you up with some grills, or because even those days, it wasn't even hook them up with free grills or a discount. It was just that to be able to sell them grills in general, because there was there weren't that many jewelers, period, that were selling grills. And the yeah. jewelers that did sell grills. They were, you know, more so like in the flea markets and swap meets. They didn't have brick and mortar, big, nice stores. Those type of jewelers didn't touch grills. They didn't, they didn't want to sell grills. The jewelers that sold grills were a little more hood or, you know what I'm saying, off the radar a little bit. You know, so for me to be a mobile grill salesman, well, me and Johnny, we're going to come to you. Well, yeah, we're going to come to you. We, we still you know, we still do that to this day. It's something that, you know what I'm saying, it's a, it's a, a amazing to uh, to be a part of, you know, to uh, to see that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, of course the song Grills came, you know, came, came from it. It was a, a huge billboard for us and for every jeweler that sells grills. You know, that's the other thing is that, you know, it, it, the higher and the bigger that Johnny gets, it's like all jewelers, you know, get bigger as, as well. So a hey, big shout out to my boy Johnny, definitely the number one, number one grill jeweler in the entire planet <laughs> of all time in the universe, in the history of the universe. Definitely. Okay, so how do you feel about the current state? of the Houston rap scene. I love the current state of the Houston rap scene. The biggest part of it that I love is the fan base is so diverse. Mm -hmm. Being that there's a diverse fan base of the Houston rap scene, that allows every branch of the Houston tree to flourish. Now, mm -hmm. if there was only fans of one particular style, then you would only see one particular style of artists or music flourishing. But being that there's so many different fans you know, uh, uh, that are diverse. You can see Don Tolliver just shining on them. You know, you can see Mona Leo going hard in the paint with it. You can see uh, all of that Mexican OT and all the other artists, D-Baby, just, just really going hard on another level. But it all boils back to the fan base of it. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, and it's a Houston fan base, but I would say it's bigger than that. 
because it, it's the maybe the Houston artists, even though you know some of the artists aren't from Houston, like Bumby's from Port Arthur, you know, he's been living in Houston forever. You know, sometimes it's, he's still yeah. a Houston artist, or like that Mexican OT, he's from Bay City, but he still kind of gets grouped in as being a Houston artist. Or, you know, uh, DJ chose, you know, being from just outside of Houston, still getting, you know, we still, still, you know, the fan base, though, is more Texas, you know, anywhere in Texas, from Rio Grande Valley to, you know, Amarillo, Odessa to Beaumont Orange, Golden Triangle, Port Arthur out there to El Paso, all over Texas. The Texas fan base is what really is the hard blood that really supports and enables any of us to do our thing, you know, from San Antonio, Corpus Christi, all down there to the DFW Metroplex, Central Texas, in okay. Austin, and everywhere in between. You know, it's a lot of in-between towns that we really, as a Texas artist, this is a true blessing. As a Texas artist, we can travel throughout the state of Texas only for our whole career, and we can tour every week of the year, and yeah. only tour the cities in Texas and never have to do the same city twice. That's 52 cities. We got definitely got. I'm talking about when you really boil down to the Brenham and everywhere, Huntsville, Madisonville, everywhere in between. We got a lot of cities in Texas where we can tour. So as long as they are supporting the Texas music that comes out, and you know, even though the art, you know, like I said, the artists, the Dallas artists now, like I say, are really starting to flourish where they you really seeing them take hold and that's where we re, we really need to cross support where there's yeah. Dallas people in Texas you go to the club and you say Dallas is where old cliff at they're going to be loud as hell you say Fort Worth in the house they're going to be loud as hell in Houston cuz mm -hmm. there's a lot of DFW people that live in Houston whether they moved down here for work went to school down here and stayed down here or or whatever for whatever reason they just you know they down here represent the same way you go to Dallas is like or, or any of the, the major cities in Houston you know what I'm saying so we got to cross pollinate with how we support each other you know what I'm saying so that it can keep flourishing the way that it is you know so that we can have sauce walker take over the world and really just bring a whole new fresh take on the texas sound and flavor and just really bring it and just wipe the whole world the whole globe with it because of the foundation that he had you know coming out of texas and representing in texas from the texas fan base you see all of these different type of artists just really really take off and but you know even with us from you know the the 2000 generation of artists why did we have so much success on a nationwide scale well it's because we had so much support and so much success on a local regionalized scale to where when we took that next step, our core foundation was there. They were already ready. We were tuned in. We were, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 it was, the engagement was there. So, you know, you, you shout, hey, shout out to all the fans that support and, and make the whole Texas sound just possible at all, period. That's great. So are there any Houston rappers that remind you of like the OGs, like Pimp C, Zero, Bun B, even yourself? Because you consider the OG now, so. There definitely are. You know, some of them is with the style, maybe of how their voice sounds. Some of it might mm -hmm. be their cadence or how they deliver things or, you know, how they, you know, some of it might be their, their song topic where if they're, you know, some of it might be their, the production style where they're incorporating certain styles of production that you know maybe ugk used to incorporate so that's why it kind of reminds you you know what i'm saying there's, there's there's definitely some i don't want to say their names because i don't want to offend them because then it feel like they're trying to copy nobody but you know i would just definitely say that when i hear new artists that sound like an older artist i don't think they i don't think that's an insult i think it's a compliment you know what i'm saying as a yeah. fan of it i like to hear the new artists sound sometimes like the old artists because it's a you know it's nostalgia it brings it back to you know representation of, of where they from or what they represent in general when they doing that where sometimes you see somebody at the same time you see somebody come where they don't sound like anybody that also can you know be fresh because then it's like okay they're not sounding like nobody but they still sound like us they might yeah. don't sound like nobody else, but they still sound like us where they represent us and you can hear where they from in their music where, you know, it, 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 you definitely, you can hear it. And it's something to be, something to be proud of. I don't want to say no names though, but definitely man, <laughs> shout out to the, shout out to the artists. I mean, I say me, every time I ever get on the mic, I'm trying to sound like Lil Kiki and Slim Thug. 
<laughs> any verse you any verse you ever heard me say, I'm trying to sound like Lil Kiki is Slim Thug. If I ever get it's some advice for anybody out there, hey, if you ever get writer's block, you can't come up with a say, man, think of your favorite rapper or hear the beat and say, man, who would sound good on this beat? And say, man, what would they say? And then you say it. That's what I do. Anytime you hear me in the rest of you hear a song like Swinging in the Rain, and you say, man, it sounds like Lil Kiki. Yep, it do, because I was trying to sound like Lil Kiki. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out to my mentor, Big Bro, my the greatest rapper of all time, Lil Kiki. Big shout out to Lil Kiki. Hey, there's nothing wrong with sounding like somebody else, man. You know, definitely, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the young rappers this, you know, this this representing that. That's what's up. So to pivot into our last question, you brought up Slim Thug, and this brings up the debate. Is but on social media and everything. Still tipping. It's a debate on who has the best verse on still tipping. Who do you think has the best verse between you, Slim, and Mike Jones? I mean, well, you know, uh, well, I, I would say this, you know, it, it actually it gets diversified because then they bring up comedian's verse. But I would say if you play Camino's verse, you got to do it on Camino's beat too, which definitely is a different mm -hmm. feel. And then you hear all of J. Cole or anyone else who's, you know, done a freestyle over it, maybe put them into the mix of it too. And then, oh. you know, you of course, you see other people like Young Poodle who maybe have remixed the beat or NLE Chopper who did it recently or all of the other artists who've done it who maybe have, you know, remixed the beat a little bit. But even if you, I mean, I still think, you know, the cream of the crop is still the cream of the crop, no matter who you put on it, no matter what sure. rapper you ever put on there, the list ever, I think it's still going to be the top. Even personally, the you know, uh, you know, I would remove myself from it, even though people always tell me I got the verse, the best verse that you, they, I don't know, but I would remove myself. I think, I think, I think your verse is the best in thugs. My, 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 my personal favorite is Slim Thug because of the nostalgia of his original verse where the hook sample came from. When I hear it, that's what I think of. And even his verse that he, he spit is a, a, a 2003, 2004 remake, remix of the original verse that he did to the freestyle where the sample for the hook came from. So there's a huge nostalgia factor with me for Slim Thug. Now at the same token, Mike Jones has a lot of quotables in his verse both Mike Jones, myself, and Slim Thug, you know, parts of our verses have been sampled, you know what I'm saying, throughout the years for other songs. That's another thing you got to take into account sometimes. Well, you know, well, this person has been sampled a few, well, all of us have been sampled a few times. I don't know, you know, I, I, I personally would have to go with Slim Thug just because of the nostalgia factor, but I wouldn't be mad personally if you put me three and you put any Mike Jones and Slim Thug one or two, either one of those, I wouldn't be mad at that at all because my, my boys came with it. My boys definitely came with it. But, I mean, we all know who went the hardest, though. We all know who yeah. went the hardest, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, you know, but definitely, no, wherever you put me on that list, I ain't mad at all because it's, it's a hell of a list. It is. So this was fun. I appreciate you so much for taking the time out of your day to interview with So. Thank you for having me. Definitely thank you for having me. Great to see you. Great to meet you. And definitely can't wait to see you here. For sure. We're going to run this back. So, you are watching SOHH.com.